With less than one week until the big election, Donald Trump is now doing everything in his power to make sure that he ekes out a victory. So he is holding lots of rallies this week and probably spreading COVID-19 um, a lot. But, you know, you'd think that if you're a president and you want to be reelected, now is the time to make your pitch to voters. Any last holdouts that you need to win over, you have to explain to them very clearly what you're going to do to them. Trump is not doing that, however. These rallies are just him freestyling about random things, uh, joking, talking about how he's safe now, he may be immune to COVID-19, he wants to kiss the men and the women in the crowd, he says this all the time. I don't understand it, uh, but it's a cult, so I don't have to understand it, because anything that he says by definition is good, because whatever Dear Leader says is gospel to these people. Uh, but anyways, you know, not everyone is in Trump's cult. But there are people who he can still win over. So what does he do? Well, rather than trying to make a pitch to them, he attacks Ilhan Omar out of the blue with an attack that is so deranged and unhinged, once again, he may be putting her life at risk. Take a look. A 700% increase in refugees from the most dangerous terror hotspots on the planet, including Syria, Somalia. You know, when I think of Somalia, I think of Omar. Omar. Ilhan. Ilhan Omar, who truly does not like our country. You know, we are going to win Minnesota because of Omar. Because of Omar. She likes telling us what we should do, how we should run our country. Isn't that nice? Omar, no, we're going to win. She hates our country. And we're going to win also because the National Guard went in. You must should have been called a lot sooner. But the National Guard went into Minneapolis, and it was a beautiful sight. It took, what, 22 minutes? It was over. After a week and a half of destroying Minneapolis. So I think between Ilhan Omar, Ilhan Omar, and be and really what happened with respect, we stopped it. They should have called us a week and a half early. We're going to win Minnesota. First time since, think of that. First time, I don't want to, I don't want to guarantee. I don't want to guarantee anything. I'm a little bit superstitious, but I want to tell you they like us. They like us in Minnesota. And how, to, and how the hell she gets elected, I cannot understand it. She's getting elected because she actually offers voters something unlike you. You offer your corporate donors a lot, so that's why they pay money to get you elected. But Ilhan Omar, she actually gives people something to believe in. Medicare for all, so Americans don't die if they don't have health insurance. Student debt cancellation, she is the sponsor of the House legislation that would wipe out all of our student debt. What are you doing, Donald Trump? What are you promising us? More fascism? More authoritarian crackdowns on the First Amendment? If we decide to protest because you refuse to do anything about police brutality, I mean, how can you not see it? How can you not see why she's popular? She stands for something. You stand for yourself. Now, what he says here is just despicable. So he's talking about refugees coming from, quote, the most dangerous terror hotspots. And then, of course, he names Ilhan Omar, which implies that she is either a terrorist or associated with people who are terrorists. Like, we know what he's doing. He's priming people, probably inadvertently, to think of Ilhan Omar and terrorists. Um, he says, she truly does not like our country. She's like telling us what we should do, how to run our country. She hates our country. So the way that he talks about Ilhan Omar, it's as if this isn't her country as well. This is his country. White America's country. How dare this refugee come to our country and tell us what to do here. This is not even dog whistle racism. This is explicitly racist. This is overt xenophobia. And by lumping her in, in the same conversation with regions where terrorism is prominent, where terrorist refugees come from, you are putting her life in danger. She already sees death threats continuously puts up with more harassment and abuse than any other lawmaker and you're making things worse because randomly at a rally you want to attack her attack one of the few politicians who actually gives a damn about the american people 
This is more her country than it is your country. I bet she pays more taxes than you. She wants to help out more Americans than you. You want to help out yourself. But the way that he pictures it, I mean, the language that he's using, it's as if he wants a white ethnostate. I mean, this is our country. You don't get to tell us what we do in our country. And to anyone who listens to this and isn't immediately repulsed and turned off, either you are, at a minimum, okay with this, this type of explicit white supremacy, or you embrace it and you agree with him. You think that people like Ilhan Omar should be excluded, shouldn't be part of Congress, shouldn't be part of the lawmaking process, shouldn't have a say in how we run our country, we being white Americans, the white ones only, not the black ones, not the brown ones, not the immigrants. That's what he's saying. So if you vote for him, congratulations. You're a terrible human being. Now, he also talked about how beautiful it was when the National Guard came in and crushed protests that erupted after George Floyd was murdered. Now, keep in mind that Americans, the majority of them approved of them burning down a Minneapolis police station because they felt like that pain and anger was justified. Everyone was angry. But Trump is saying when the National Guard came in and crushed those protests, that was beautiful. This is fascism. When you crush your opposition, that by definition is fascism. He's not trying to stop the protests that he doesn't want by trying to meet with some of the leaders, black leaders, civil rights leaders, about how to reform police departments to stop police brutality. He's just trying to silence them. He's a disgusting fucking human being. Scum. Now, Ilhan Omar responded saying, it's surreal that an unhinged president of the United States would repeatedly say my name at his cult rallies, or that Americans would even elect someone like him. 24 years ago, if someone told my father when we arrived as refugees, he would have advised them to seek help, vote. Yeah, and that's just it. Um, you know, it, it's shocking that Americans elected someone like Donald Trump. You know, for how disappointed I've been in this country, like, it's still shocking that Trump is the president, someone who is openly a fascist, openly white supremacist, uses the same exact rhetoric that we'd hear from people who advocate for a white ethno state. It's indistinguishable from the people chanting, you know, um, Jews will not replace us at Charlottesville. It's the same thing. How dare this brown immigrant tell us how to run our country, white Americans, we know what we're doing. Same fucking rhetoric. It's why white supremacists feel emboldened by Donald Trump. So this is, uh, I mean, just a terrible human being. And even though Joe Biden doesn't deserve to win in a landslide because he also is a bad person, Trump deserves to lose in a landslide. He deserves to lose and go down in flames. So that way, this type of politics is thoroughly and permanently delegitimized. But unfortunately, in America... When racism is still a giant problem, when it's embedded in all of our institutions, both politically and socially, this is probably going to be something that uh, stays around for centuries. Because you can't just like pretend racism isn't a thing. You can only try to suppress it so long until it rears its ugly head once again. And the way it's manifesting with Donald Trump, it's, uh, it's not new. It's always been there, just waiting for its moment to reemerge. And, you know, fascism, white supremacy really got its second win with Donald Trump. So I hope he loses in a landslide because this is just a terrible human being to say this about Ilhan Omar. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?